God can never manifest himself to a man unless through another man. For any assignment without help is bound to break the back of the career. Are you even a helper to somebody? Because if you are expecting someone to be a helper to you, you should also be a helper to some other person. I don't know what has been keeping you on one spot for so long. I don't know what has been causing you to go two steps ahead in life and four steps backwards. I don't know that thing that is causing you to lose finances. I'm here to stand on the words of Jesus. Lift up my hands and say, Father! Father! Visit me today! Visit me today! And Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. Somebody shout glory. glory. Somebody shout glory. glory. Hallelujah. Why do I take our time to explain all this? To let us know that the Jesus we are looking for is right beside us that the Jesus we are looking for is right beside us hallelujah hallelujah also seeking God is a call unto salvation a call unto salvation every human has the spirit of God in him Every human has the spirit of God in him. He is the God of all things. He created everything. The Bible says in the book of Genesis that when God created man, he breathed into man. And so in every human is already the awareness that there is God. That God exists and that God is alive. It does not matter the God they know. Everybody know that God knows that God exists. Every human knows that God exists. And that spirit is the Holy Spirit. The spirit of God. In Job chapter 32, the Bible says there is a spirit in man and the breath of the Almighty give them understanding there is a spirit in man and the breath of God that give them understanding so every human has the spirit of God be it a believer be it an unbeliever everybody has the spirit of God but the difference between us and the unbeliever is that the spirit within us and upon us is alive and active because we have acknowledged him as Lord but of the unbeliever is dormant because they have not acknowledged him as Lord but he is their God. The spirit of God. There is a spirit in man. It is this spirit, the Holy Spirit that can make an unbeliever leave his house and come to church without hearing any message, without hearing any man preach to him. Without hearing about repentance, without hearing about salvation, the spirit of God. Some of you are here not because you saw the advert, not because Prophet Kevin spoke, but the spirit of God brought you here. There is something beyond AGM, there is something beyond Prophet Kevin, and that is the spirit of God. The spirit of God. It is the spirit of God that helps men to understand the word of God. That is why an unbeliever can come to church and the prophet of God is ministering. He is understanding somewhere in his spirit but his human mind cannot he cannot explain with his human mind because the understanding has gone to his spirit. So when he now believes in God and acknowledges God, God comes. A call unto salvation. A call unto salvation. That is why Jesus can appear to the prophet Kevin in his room even when he was not seeking him and tell him I have called you to work for me. A call unto salvation. A call unto salvation. Are we yielding to the Holy Spirit? 
if we are believers, let us stop crying like unbelievers. Let us stop crying like those who do not know God. From the scripture where we read in Jeremiah 29 verse 11 to 14 it says and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart with all your heart so anyone that seeks God must find him anyone that seeks God must find him very few people in the world know God very few people in the world know God. And so we cannot afford to, to seek God casually or half-heartedly. Our search for God must be sincere. And it must be passionate. Many people do not know God. Some people know the law. And others know the Lord. When I talk about the law, I'm talking about manifestations. When I'm talking about the law, I talk about giftings. I talk about prosperity. I talk about having a name. I'm talking about fame. That is the law and not the Lord. So, so many things are carried when God is using them to do things, thinking they know the Lord and they do not know, know God. Where do you fall? Do you know God or do you know the law? Do you know God or do you know the law? God is in the secret. Hallelujah. God is in the secret. He is waiting for you and I in the secret. So that he can reward us openly. What are we waiting for? When you go to pray, when you go to worship, what or who is your chief object? Is it your time, the time you are looking at to go to your meeting? Is it the time you are looking at to go to work? In the place of fellowship? At the place of encounter? Who is your chief object? Even if salvation or eternity does not consist of coming to church or belonging to an association or a religion, the fact that you are now a Christian and you are part of a church is an added advantage to seek God. It's an added advantage. It's an added advantage. an added advantage we must desire to seek God more hallelujah we must desire to seek God more because God has been seeking us for eternity God has been seeking us for eternity so we must desire him how much time do we spend seeking God how much sooner can we find God I understand we have problems I understand that we have issues so many we have worries uncertainties doubts but we cannot handle it by our own strength we can't we can't we can't We can't. We must realize the need of God more than the way he uses us. More than the way he blesses us. We can't find
find him in Jerusalem or in Rome. We can't find him in any of these places. We can't find him in any of these places. We've got to find him in our hearts. In our hearts. That's where he's waiting to have your attention. In your heart. So you can't afford to go out of your own heart. And that is why the Bible says, guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. For out of it springs forth the issues of life. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. And when you guard your heart with all diligence, Jesus will reign supreme. I said Jesus will reign supreme. I said Jesus will reign supreme. I said Jesus will reign supreme. Jesus will reign supreme. And what a change that comes when we find him. We become the change. Are we together? Yes, ma'am. We become the change. If you go out of your own heart, then you will miss him. You will miss him. You will miss him. It's a matter of seeking him, thinking about him, and abiding. Constantly abiding. Constantly abiding. Constantly abiding. We must not get tired of seeking God. We must not get tired of seeking God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, when we see, when, when we, we talk of seeking God, you know, when you seek something or someone you really want or you really need, you're not going to give up until you find that thing. So why are we giving up on God? Scripture says, and he shall seek me and find me. When he shall seek me, seek for me with all your heart. Why are we giving up on God? Why are we giving up on God? says when you shall seek for me with all your heart with all your heart with all your heart when you seek God you will find him when you find him you will know him When you know God, you will have a relationship with him. And when you have a relationship with him, you will love him. You will love him. And when you love him, you will give yourself to him. You will give yourself to him. You will give your all to him. You will surrender your all to him. Because in love, giving is the greatest. In love, you do not give what you can get. You can get. You give yourself. If Jesus should take back his life, then we are gone. Giving is the greatest proof of love in any form. That is why the Bible says in John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world that he gave. He gave himself. So when you love him, you will give yourself. And then when you give yourself, you now fellowship. You have fellowship with him. There is no barren fellowship. There is no barren fellowship. When you are fellowshipping with someone and there are no fruits, then there is a problem. 
even prostitutes you know sometimes we say they are out they are just out to give their body no there is something that is there is something that is passionate about the thing they are doing it is the money they are after so it is not empty it is not empty but that kind of fellowship leads to death and destruction it leads to death and destruction so what more about Jesus what happens to us when we fellowship with Jesus what happens to us when we fellowship with the maker what happens to us when we fellowship with our master fellowship fellowship because when you fellowship with him you start bearing fruits you start bearing fruits you start bearing fruits the kind of fruits you bear determines the one or the thing you fellowship with check your fruits check your fruits because in this our world today we we fake make so many things people fake relationship we fake friendship we fake smiles we fake manifestations we fake power but we cannot fake fellowship you cannot fake fellowship what you produce is as a result of the thing or the person you fellowship with And when you see someone who fellowships with God, you know. God's prophet, our father in the house, is a proof of a man that fellowships with God. In his songs, in his messages, is Christ revealed, Christ magnified, Christ glorified. Everything about him is Christ. This is the man who fellowships with God daily daily when i talk of daily i mean daily there is no manipulation he fellowships with god daily and that is why sometimes you will even you will say sometimes i used to wonder some people will say ha -ha, how can prophet kevin teach us about the blessings of god he tells us we, that we are blessed. He tells us about how God has favored us today. And then tomorrow he is teaching us on the mercy of God. Yes, because he is seeking God. Seeking God is not a one day, one day thing. It is because he is seeking God. You say, how can he take us to a higher dimension in God? Teaching us about the revelation of Christ. About the, the, the manifestations of God. And then he comes back and begins to teach us about altars yes because that is what god wants him to do because there is someone somewhere who has not understood what it means to break evil altars and build holy altars for god so he says go back not as he wants but as the spirit wants so many persons are carried today with the manifestations not getting instructions from the holy spirit not minding what god wants them to do because they are making it big in life they are all they are concerned about is the name the fame and everything no there is a there is a holy backwardness in god there is a holy backwardness in god it's because he is seeking god anyone who is just going and going and going and going ha check yourself well -o. Ask yourself if what this what you are doing is God's will. That's why sometimes you will say so many persons when you hear uh, now it is time for, for people to go now is this Dubai line, you jump. Dubai is a goosey business, you jump a goosey business. It is now a uh, Kotonu, you jump, you go to Kotonu. Everybody can go to Kotonu and succeed. Is that what God wants you to do? Is that where God wants you to go? Seek the face of God. Seek the face of God. Seek the 
face of God for your life, for your generation, for your family, for your children. Seek the face of God. Seek the face of God. In every aspect of your life, in business, in ministry, what, as a teacher, whatever you are doing, please seek the face of God concerning what you're doing. It doesn't matter how far you have gone in God. If there is something God wants you to learn, he will bring you back. He will bring you back. It does not matter if you are in America. If there is something God wants you to, to learn, he will bring you back to Kumba. Moses removed his shoes before the burning bush. He knew, he, he, he thought he knew all about God. But when he got there, Papa God said, remove your shoes. Remove. It does not matter how far you have gone. If you are not seeking the face of God, even while seeking, you still have to live according to his will, according to his plans, according to his purpose. Because when you are in his will and he brings you back, it is not for destruction, it is not for pain, it is not for shame. When you now step back, he gives you speed. In the process, you'll be crying and lamenting, oh, all the years that the canker worms, that the caterpillars, and God is saying, my child, don't worry, I'm working out something for your good. Seek God. Seek God. Seek God. Seek God. How well do we seek God? How well do we seek God? It does not matter your state. It does not matter how far you have gone. Are you in his will? Are you in his will? Are you in his will? When we seek him, I said it becomes a demonstration of our reverent obedience to his call. A demonstration of our reverent obedience to his call. Hallelujah. How blessed are the people who are not satisfied with anything. How blessed are we? How blessed are the people who are not satisfied with anything? Because many things will come our way. So many things that will look like Jesus, but it is not Jesus. So many things. So many things will come. That looks like Jesus. So many things will come that looks like Jesus. And this is where some, some, of, some of us, we get stopped because we are satisfied with those things. We get satisfied with those things. And truth is, nothing in this world brings or gives satisfaction. Nothing at all. Nothing brings satisfaction. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Only Jesus can give you what you want. Only Jesus. God hides himself in some of these blessings that we are crying for. He hides himself to see whether those who are seeking him will get satisfied of the things that are short of him.
He hides himself in those things. And then we begin to go after those things and neglecting him. We thought, oh, after marriage, we become the happiest women on earth. You marry and you're not satisfied. You want children. God gives you children. You are not satisfied. You have money. You don't sleep. You don't have money. You don't sleep. You have children. You don't sleep. You don't have children. You don't sleep. You have a job. You don't sleep. You don't have a job. You don't sleep. Unadi rest. Don't rest. Women, we don't rest. You travel, you don't sleep. You don't travel, you don't still sleep. You build a house, you don't sleep. You don't have a house, you don't sleep. At the end of the day, what is important? These things are necessary, but they are not as important as the Lord himself. They are good, they are necessary. They are vital, but not as important as the Lord himself. Because if he does not give you life, if he does not give you health, if he does not give you strength, all the things you are crying and craving for, you won't enjoy them. No rest, no satisfaction. That's why you have to locate the prophet of God. We'll come to that tomorrow. That's why you have to locate a prophet of God for prophetic instruction in order to help you see God well. Seek God. No satisfaction. No joy. There's a difference between joy and happiness. Happiness comes when you are married, you are happy. You are not married, you are not happy. You have money, you are happy. They do not have money, but spirit, joy, joy is a spirit. Joy is a spirit. And it is only Jesus that can give that joy. Only Jesus that can give that joy. Only Jesus. So it does not matter. It does not matter how long. Whatever God has told you, either through a dream, through a vision, through his word, through his servant, please believe. 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 Let us seek God and have peace. Let us seek God and have peace. The woman at the well in John chapter 4, married to five husbands, and the seed was not even hers as the Bible records. But she was not satisfied. Ha ha. One, two, even three cannot give you what you want. One, two, three, four, five, six. No satisfaction. There is something she was looking for. But when she found Jesus, she found purpose. This is what God can do. This is what will happen when you seek God. Your life will make a difference. When you seek God wholeheartedly, your life will make a difference. A difference in the ages of eternity. Let us seek God and have peace. Let us seek God. Let us seek God. Let us seek God. Jesus tells us the story of the woman who lost her piece of money. The Bible says she had, she had ten coins and one got missing. And she kept searching and finding, searching and finding, searching and finding. And at one point, the Bible says she, she looked for a lamp. The lamp talks of, Jesus, of the word of God, who is Jesus. And she kept searching. She knew that it wouldn't be possibly anywhere else apart from her house. She kept on searching and searching and searching and searching. At one point, she would see something glittering, thinking it's the coin, only to discover that it's a piece of paper. And she says, no, this is not what I am looking for. I have ten coins. One is missing. I need that one. It's not supposed to be nine. It ought to be ten. The cars and the houses I have are not enough. 
The manifestations of God now are not enough. The money, the prosperity, the excellence, everything I have now is not enough. There is something I am looking for. There is a God I am looking for. There is someone I am looking for. There is a realm in God I want to attain. There is a dimension of God I want to attain. There is a revelation of God I want to have. My money is not enough. My house does not give me satisfaction. My car does not give me satisfaction. There is someone I want to touch. There is someone I want to feel. There is someone I want to hold. There is someone I want to smell. She said, this is not what I am looking for. We get satisfied with the things that are short of him. Satisfied with gifts, satisfied with manifestations, satisfied with blessings. But those things are not enough. They are not enough. They are not enough. They are not enough. She says, this is not what I am looking for. This is not who I am looking for. There is someone I want to see. There is someone I am looking for. And that person is Jesus. That person is Jesus. That person is Jesus. That person is Jesus. If we look at the life of Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul, with all the destructions and the killings and the damages, but when he encountered God, today when we talk of him, we do not think of him, we think of Jesus. Because of the things he did in the name of the Lord. He was killing Christians, fighting the church, killing people. And he, he thought or he knew he was serving God. Because that was their religion and their tradition. He was an intelligent man and he was doing it with so much zeal and passion and desire. But God said, I will use this same desire for my glory. He said, I will use the same desire for my glory. And the Bible makes me to understand that he was from another mission and on his way to Damascus, lightning from heaven struck him and he became blind. He had not yet received Christ. Lightning from heaven struck him and he became blind. And then Jesus spoke to him and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you, Lord? How did he know that Jesus was the one talking? Just from killing people. Just from destroying. He said, who are you, Lord? There is a spirit in man. There is a spirit in man. It does not matter if you are a Muslim. The spirit of God is in you. Whether you like it or not, take it or you leave it, the spirit of God is in you. Apostle Paul was from killing, destroying, damaging. So God had to use that blindness to transform him into another man. To transform him into another man. And even those who were around him were only hearing voices, but they were not seeing anyone. They were just hearing voices. And this is what happens. Please don't talk about people. You don't know what people are going through. You don't know how God is using people. Please keep your mouth shut. I imagine Apostle Paul, they would have been saying, oh yes, let him remain blind. He's a wicked man. Ah! Fighting a man whom the hand of God is upon is at your own detriment. They would have been saying, let him remain blind. He's wicked. He has killed so many people. God is punishing him. He said, Lyo, God is not punishing him at all. Leave him and God. The people you are condemning and challenging them and, and analyzing their lives, are you better than them? Allow people to go through what they are going through. God is the maker of life. He knows what he is doing to each and every one of us. I cannot compare my life with yours. God has a way that he has programmed my life to be. He has a way that he has programmed your life to be. So I cannot compare with you. I don't know why God is allowing you to go through what you are going through. It's his business. It is not man's business. It's God's business. If he's a man of God, 
how can you be praying for, for, for people and you have children and he does not have children keep your mouth shut you don't know what God is doing you don't know what God is doing he was blind he would have remained blind because he had done so many evil so much evil but no one knew that it was the will of God for him to become blind so that he can be transformed from Saul to Paul and today he is one of the greatest apostles let people be let them be let God work in their lives God is working on them just the way he's working on you allow people how can you be condemn another, condemning another man's children that they are prostitutes they are thieves they are dull they are this and your children are going through the same thing that this person children are going also instead for you to be praying that your children should become examples please let us seek god let us seek god i just came back to encourage us to encourage us to encourage us we can't get tired of seeking god let's not be weary let's not get tired let's not faint god is faithful god is faithful i said god is faithful in the name of jesus rise to your feet